In this video, we'll start by learning about the depth-first algorithm. A depth-first algorithm is an online method, meaning that the robot makes a decision, then takes an action, then makes another decision, then takes an action. Also, it's an uninformed method. That means that the robot does not need to know how far away it is from its goal state in order to make decisions. This algorithm is called depth first because it explores all the way down to the bottom of a particular branch of the problem space tree before trying another branch. If it finds a way to the goal state in the branch that it is currently exploring, then we'll stop searching and take that as the solution. The depth first algorithm is pretty simple. We're going to write some Python code to do it, and then we'll use our Python code to look at different kinds of additions, enhancements, and so on that we can make to any particular search algorithm to make it work better or at least differently. Because of the length of the code to do this, this is the only algorithm that we'll write code for today. But after we write this code, we're going to learn about two more algorithms. And if you want to try to figure out how to write code for those two, that would be awesome. But for today, we'll only write one algorithm into code, the depth first algorithm. Open up Python idle and create a new file. We'll start by importing the libraries that we'll need. To begin with, all we need are NumPy, and we'll also need matplotlib. We'll use matplotlib to show us a plot of what's happening with our robot as it makes decisions and moves through space. Let's start our code by setting up the plot. I'm going to set up the plot to allow animations like we did in the Parallel Mechanisms lab. Now I'm going to need to keep track of the robot's current state. So I'll create a variable called state. and it will be an array. In this problem, the robot's state is the same thing as its location. Let's start out by having our robot start in location 1, 1. We can change this later on to do some experiments with how our code works. Next, I want to take care of the actions that the robot can take. Here, the robot can make four different actions, up, down, right, and left. I'll define these four actions like this. The up action will have an x value of 0 and a y value of 1. That's because in order for the robot to move up, I would need to add 1 to the robot's y location. So, similarly, the action down will be an array with a value of 0 for x and negative 1 for y. That's because in order to get the robot to move down, we would have to subtract 1 from the robot's y value of its state. Let's make right and left actions in the same way. To move right, we would have to add 1 to the x value and add 0 to the y. To move left, we would have to subtract 1 from x and add 0 to y. Next, I want to make an array that keeps track of the order in which we want to explore the possible actions.
Here, the order in which I list the actions matters. I'm going to start by listing the order as up, right, down, left. We're going to write our code so that the robot will first try to move up. It will then consider moving right only if up is not a possible action. Similarly, it will only consider moving down if it cannot move up or right. It will only try to move left if it cannot move up, right, or down. This is how the depth first algorithm works. It always tries to move to the bottom of a particular branch of the tree before it tries a different branch. And here, the branches are the actions. So in other words, it will try to always move up before it considers trying to move right or down, which are different branches of the tree. Next, I need to keep track of the goal state. So I'll make an array. And I'll put the goal in the upper right hand corner, the opposite corner of the robot. That is position 19, 19. Next, I need to make some barriers. This is going to be a little bit complicated because we have a lot of barriers. The barriers that we'll start with will define the walls of the room that the robot is moving around in. So I'm going to make a couple of arrays that consist of all of the points of the walls of the room. I'll first list the X values and then I'll list the Y values and then we'll put them together. So we'll do it like this. I'll use NP append which is a command that sticks together a bunch of arrays. The first array I want to stick together is NP dot lin space 0, 20, 21. This creates an array that starts at the value 0, ends at the value 20, and puts 21 values in between there. So it will be an array that goes 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, up to the number 20. Next, I want an array of 21 zeros. So I'll do that using np.zeros like this. And then next, I need another lin space. And then I need another zeros. But here I'm going to add 20 so that this wall will be located at the top of the room instead of at the bottom of the room. These arrays that we're creating will make more sense when we look at the plot in a minute. So for now, try to get your code right and then after we look at it, it will make more sense what we're doing here. Next, we need the Y values of the barriers. We're going to use the same arrays as we did in the x value, but we'll put them in opposite order so that we get values that make a whole square. Okay, now we'll stick together the X and Y values for the barriers into a list. And we'll do that like this. 
We'll start out by defining the barriers vector as just one single value. Then, for every value in the vector y barriers, we're going to stack the x and y value onto our existing list of barriers. All right, we want to stop here and test our code by actually plotting what we have so far. So let's build some plot commands. We'll plot the current state as a red circle. This red circle will then represent the location of our robot. We'll turn the hold on so that we don't erase the robot while we're drawing the other things. The other things we need to draw are the goal state and the barriers. Let's draw the goal state. Now let's draw the barriers. The colon here indicates that we want to draw all of the barriers. Let's draw them as black circles. Next, I want to set up my axes. I'd like to limit the range of the x and y axes both to range from negative 1 to 21. We'll make sure to draw the plot. Then I'll leave some space for the next code we'll write and we'll turn off the plot interaction and show the plot. Okay, let's run this code and see if we have it right. Run, run module. If you get some red warnings in your shell screen, that's okay. But you should also get a plot that looks like this. Our robot location, that is its state, is shown here in red. The goal state is shown in blue. And currently, our barriers are just the walls of the room that should be shown around here as black circles. If you have this, that's great. We will move right on. Before the plot command, we're going to create a new variable called potential state. We'll use potential state to check to see if a place that is possible for the robot to move is a barrier or not. For now, we'll start by setting it equal to 0, 0. Next, after our initial plot, we'll create a loop. We'll make this an infinite loop, but inside this loop, we'll have a break command somewhere that will get us out of the loop when the robot has reached its goal state. So we need to have a way to keep track of whether or not the robot is done 
and whether or not a potential state is a good state or a bad state. So we'll create a new variable called done and we'll set it equal to false initially because we don't want the robot to be done before it's even started. Also, I'm going to create a variable called bad and set it equal to true. Anytime bad is true, this will trigger the algorithm to check a different possible location for the robot to move to. So I want bad to start out as true so the robot doesn't stop looking before it's even started. Now, while not done and bad, we want to check a potential state. The potential state is going to be equal to the current state plus an action. So I'll create some scalar values to hold things that we're interested in. P1 will be equal to the x value of the robot's current state. And P2 will be equal to the Y value of the robot's current state. Then I'll use P3 and P4 to keep track of the action that we are investigating as a possible action for the robot to take. P3 is the X value of the possible action, and P4 is the Y value of the possible action. Now, I put zero here to mean that we want to check the first action that's in our list of actions that we have up here. But I want this algorithm to be able to cycle through the actions and investigate one after the other. So instead of just saying that we're going to check the first action, I'm going to replace this with a variable. I'll call this variable check because this is the action that we're going to check this time through the loop. Then right before the loop starts, I'll start by setting check equal to zero. Okay, now I want the potential state to be equal to the current state plus the action that we are investigating. So I'll say potential state, the x value, is equal to P1, the x value of the current state, plus P3, the x value of the action that we are considering taking. Also, we'll say that the y value of the potential state is equal to P2, the y value of the current state, plus P4, the y value of the action that we are considering for the robot to take. Next, I want to see if the robot has actually reached the goal. Here's how we do that. Done is equal to, and now we will check if goal is equal to the robot's state. Then we do dot all with a one in parentheses dot any open and close parentheses. This will make done be true if the robot's current state is contained in the goal anywhere and it will check all of the values that are in the variable goal. Now of course goal only has one value because we only have one goal, but doing it this way would allow us to have more than one possible goal for the robot to find. Also, I can use this same syntax to check to see if the potential state is bad. Bad is equal to barriers if they are equal to potential state dot all dot any. This will make the variable bad become true 
if the potential state is in our list of barriers. In other words, if the potential state is a barrier, that's a bad potential state. And we will stay in this loop and check a different potential state instead of going to that potential state. Okay, next we have to take check and add one so that we can check the next state if the potential state we just checked is a bad one. And then, since we only have a total of four potential states, I'm going to check here to see if check is equal to four and the fourth potential state is also bad then we're going to print stuck, meaning that the robot has gotten stuck somewhere and it has no possible location it can go to. And in that case, we want to break out of the loop. So once we get finished with this while loop, we have figured out which potential state we want to go to. So I'll set state, its x value, equal to the potential state, which was P1 plus P3. And I'll set the Y value of the state equal to the Y value of the potential state, which as we remember from up here is P2 plus P4. Now, if done is true, that means we've reached the final state. So we'll print goal achieved and then we'll break out of the loop. Now the next thing we need to do is plot an update of where the robot is. So let's go up here to our plot commands and copy all of these lines. And we need to indent them all because we want them to be inside of this while loop. After the draw command, we need to have a little pause so that we have time to see what the robot is doing. Let's do plt.pause 0.1. Before we run this, let's add one more thing. I'd like to print out what the state is of the robot. So let's do print state equals state. And secondly, I want to also keep track of how many moves or how many actions were required for the robot to reach its goal state. So back at the top, let's say moves equals zero. And then down at the bottom here, let's do moves equals moves plus one. And then when we are done, let's print goal achieved in moves moves. Okay, one more thing. Right after we finish printing the barriers, we need to turn the hold back off so that we don't have the new robot position always plotting over the old robot position. So let's do plt.hold false. Okay, let's go ahead and test this. We'll do run, run module. If you get a runtime error, don't worry about it. You'll probably get the runtime error and it will still work. If this is working, you should see the robot move across the screen and arrive at the goal. The output window should print out what the state of the robot was at each move. And at the end, it will say that the goal was achieved and how many moves it took. If you have that working, let's go do a couple of experiments. Close the figure window. 
go back up to the top and let's change the order of actions here. You can change this order of actions however you want, and different things will happen. Try a couple of different orders, run the code, and then make observations. Does the robot always get to its final goal, no matter what the order of operations is? Or does the robot sometimes get stuck? You should find that there are some orders of operations where the robot does not reach the goal. In this example, the robot gets stuck in a loop in the corner. It keeps searching the same two squares over and over again. This is happening because we haven't given the robot any kind of memory. It doesn't know that it's searched the top square and the bottom square over and over again. If we could give the robot some memory, I bet we could solve this problem. When the robot gets stuck, you can exit the program either by closing the figure window or by clicking on the shell window and then hitting Control C to force the program to stop. You might have to hit Control C a couple of times. Now, let's try and give the robot a memory. One of the easiest ways to do this is to just place any objects the robot has already visited into the list of barriers. Since we already have code set up to not allow the robot to move into a barrier, this will make it so that the robot will never search the same spot twice. Up above the while one loop, let's add this line. Onto the existing barriers stack. We will stack the robot's state so that each state becomes a barrier. We'll copy this line and then we'll paste it in the bottom of the loop here also. Now let's try running this code again. This time, every time the robot moves, it leaves behind it a barrier in the space it just left. You can wait through this whole process to see if the robot reaches its goal. If you want the robot to move faster, I'm going to show you how to do that here. This pause value right there is the value that determines how fast the robot moves. If you make this number smaller, the robot will move faster. And the only drawback is that it's harder to see where the robot is moving when the robot moves faster. So for example, I could make this 0 0.01 and we could run this. And then the robot will move much faster. Try this with a couple of different orders of actions up here and see what you observe. Write down your observations and then we'll do another experiment. Let's try placing the goal in a different location. Here is where we define the location of the goal. Suppose we would place the goal right in the middle, 10-10 instead of 19-19. Would this change the robot's ability to successfully find the goal? Try this with a couple of different action orders and see what happens and keep track of your observations. After you've made a couple of observations, come back to the video and we'll make another change. Okay, let's try this. Let's add a barrier in the room that isn't one of the walls. Right here, before we define potential state, let's add a couple more barriers onto our barriers array. After barriers in this vstack command, we're going to give a list of locations where we want the barrier to be. Let's try this. Let's place a barrier at 1, 8, 2, 8, 
and let's keep going for a little while so that we get a nice sized barrier here. And then finally we'll place a closing bracket and two closing parentheses. And now let's run it again. Watch the robot's behavior. Is it different now that we have another barrier in place? Do a couple of experiments. Does the presence of the barrier change the robot's behavior? Does the robot ever get stuck? Try a couple of different orders and make observations of what you observe. After you've made some observations, come back and we'll make one more change. Okay, what if now we would make the order of moves random instead of a specified order of moves? Let's start by taking out our additional barrier that we made here. We can just put a, a hashtag or pound sign in front of this to comment it out. And for now, let's also remove the robot's memory. Let's take out this line where we added the state to the barriers. And we also did that up here where we added the state to the barriers. Take that out. Now, up at the top of your code, let's add import random. Then let's scroll down to the place where we're determining which action to check next. This is the variable that we called check. Comment out this line so we can go back to it later if we want. And let's make check equal to random dot choice. And we want it to choose between 0, 1, 2, or three. Then copy this line, then find the line where we're incrementing check by one. Comment that out and instead make check again become a random choice. Now let's run the code. Watch the robot's behavior. Does the robot ever reach the goal? Keep in mind that your result here will be different than mine since we've introduced an element of randomness. Observe the robot's behavior for a while and then let's add in some of the things that we just took out. So you can stop this code running if it never reaches the goal either by closing the figure window or you can click on the shell window and hit control C several times. Now Let's put the barrier back in. So up here, we had added a barrier and we took it out. Run the code and see what you observe. Watch the output for a while and make observations. Then let's do one more thing. Let's put the robot's memory back in. Uncomment this line. And down here, uncomment this line. Run your code with the barrier in place, and then run it again with the barrier removed, and watch what happens. Does the robot reach its goal state or not? Does it reach the goal state faster or slower than before? Or does the robot get stuck? Keep in mind that you'll have to run this code a number of times and watch what happens. Since we've added in an element of randomness, different things will happen every time you run the code. Remember that you can remove the barrier that we've added by commenting out this line so that you can watch the effect of random motion without the barrier. Organize the observations you made and then verbally tell me what you observed in all of your different experiments. Did you notice any trends? What did you observe and what did you learn from the experiments that you did?